Welcome to Car Scene Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis Hyundai and Gia cars. And I'm here today at Hyundai Motor Studios Hall, as you can see right here. And make sure you come check this place out when you are in Gangnam. And I'm here today to check out the all new Elantra PE fancy elevator. And let's go check it out. Here we are, Hyundai Motor Studios Ho. As you can see, those cars are just flipped over and actually the entire building has these cars laying around just like that, all visible from the outside. So we are at one of the busiest streets here in Korea in Gangnam. And of course, we're not here for that. We're here for this Elantra. For your information, it's called Avante here in Korea. Elantra actually was a car, a different car for the domestic market, but that is the name that Hyundai got for North American market, as well as the export models. It's got that parametric design right here and just bold design of triangles all around. I cannot miss this out. This is the part that shines the most. I mean, just look at that. So that is the DRL light and the LED headlamps. Regardless of the trim that you get, all Elantras now get the LED headlights. There's been a lot of debate whether that's going to be continued and also if it's going to light up. Keeping up with the Hyundai look, the seamless horizon lamp that's been implemented on Granger aka Azera and also Kona. But as we can see, I'm getting to see it in person as well for the first time. This is actually a chrome. So this is not connected, unlike how many people have been hoping. Well, I don't know. Tell me in the comment below. Do you actually like this new Hyundai look with seamless horizon lamp that connects all throughout or not? Hyundai Staria, the MPV model. That one wasn't actually connected. That is gone with Elantra. It's got a piano black finish right here, the plastic and also chrome, but not the bling bling chrome that we know of, somewhat toned down chrome. And I bet that chrome is used on other parts of this car as well. I think we'll see more of that on the back of this car. So let's go check it out momentarily, of course, because there are just so many design change up on the front compared to the one on the rear. Hemda doesn't necessarily call it a facelift and often models actually get two facelifts within, right? And I'm talking about Genesis G70 here as well. This partial change is what Hyundai pursues with this brand new name and also the title. And just look at this, check this out. Just check out the front of this car. I mean, what are your thoughts? Do you actually like the one that we originally had? Because I mean, from a distance, it's even more distinctive because that headlight portion was striking off. It has much more steep design towards the tip of the headlight as we know, but now that is gone. It is actually more toned down, more horizontal. I dare to say low and wide. That never gets wrong. That never is old with cars. When it comes to cars, low and wide is what makes the car stand out by far. The partial change model has done a great, great job with that. And you see, I haven't even gone through all the design points. I mean, just seeing this car and meeting this car in person, this is absolutely gorgeous. And you see, I'll be honest, when I actually saw the official photo released that I have posted on my community a few days ago, I was a little skeptical about the design because you see the original CN7 had us just a beautiful, perfect design overall already. Just so many people fell in love with it, including the end line and also not to mention about the end. There is N coming on this PE, the partial change model as well. So those of you guys curious about it, I have the answer for you right now. So yes, Elantra N is coming on this PE model. I think this applies the same for all the cars out there but this car even looks much better in person. Just check that out. And just look at the beautiful blue color. Absolutely love this. Elantra, I personally think, is one of the very few cars that really look good on bright, bright colors. Perhaps the reason why is because there are just so many straight and bold lines, including the profile straight here, straight up there, 
in one connected line right there love the ultimate red metallic you can never get wrong with the white color the atlas white just looks beautiful i'm sitting right next to elantra literally not sure if this was the best angle i can get but i just wanted to do it because this is what elantra kind of feels like to me a lot of people choose elantra for their first car ever probably one for the college or if not maybe high school even and this is a great family car as well at the same time so this car has to entail and embrace a vast majority of population out there. This car does not let you down. Roomy inside and design is also suitable, applicable to everybody out there. Just look how aggressive this Elantra has gotten. This lip spoiler or front lip like the design, the tip is pointing out this little tip that goes towards that matches with the lower part of the grille. This diagonal design actually goes into the center where your attention gets drawn immediately. So when you're looking at this Elantra in a glance, all your attention goes right to the middle. We cannot miss out this brand new logo. This is a flat brushed out aluminum like Hyundai logo slash emblem. The bumper upper part and the lower part is now divided it divides the car with a strong you see there is a body color line running through in the middle and separating the two distinctively and that is the one of the largest difference from the predecessor because the predecessor actually had the whole grill connected all together there is just a lot of n line if not n aspect even on this regular regular elantra model this definitely is it because we've seen that a lot on ends i dare to say that is the signatory end design what else this kind of gives that look of uh well the garnish here is it open oh my god it is where are you there it's cut open and of course this is not directed to inside the wheel but rather it actually shoots out and spits out the air where are you i know you can see it right there so it actually shoots the air out of this way so that's been implemented and used on a lot of other Hyundai cars mostly has to do with getting rid of the dirty air hence attributing to better MPG so this is not just for the looks I mean it looks great as well but not just for the looks it's also practical you see Elantra Bing Hyundai is not so crazy over about the coefficient of drag on this car but you know the lower the number of the coefficient of drag it's always better better mpg better aerodynamics so why not i love to have that on my car as well more on this i mean i just cannot skip out on the front look another piano black that's been used here just look how aggressive it is the more time i spend with regular elantra just can't wait to see the end version of this one because the headlight has been now lowered and relocated to further stretching out somewhere right here now the fender actually had to come in a little more towards here compared to the predecessor for the predecessor the headlight actually was connected all the way up to here so it was the headlight that was touching with the bonnet and also the front bumper so there was no need for the fender to come out this much but there needed to be for this facelift i think it's one of a brilliant way for hyundai to come up with saving the cost as much as possible so all they had to do leave out the bonnet as is but just change out the fender and then you get that headlight still we have that strong character line once again another ridge right here Elantra doesn't give you any other choice but to keep your eye on right in the center right here where Hyundai emblem is. You guys probably know this already. This is the brand new emblem that Hyundai got Hyundai will be using. A little bit of a different texture compared to the emblem, the chrome that's been used here. Chrome is not inside the plastic but rather so it's in between these piano black. So keep that in mind. There's a camera on the front and also sensors for your radar and also hda and what does that mean come this way wait for this 
It's ready. All right, so there's a camera on the side mirrors as well. So that means a Lantra gets 360 degree camera as well. I bet this will be one of the best selling color for a Lantra. It always has been the black and white. It can never get wrong, but oh my God, it's just so beautiful. Now, I think we had plenty of time with the front. Did I? Did I actually? <laughs> So I think we have plenty of time with the front look. Let's go take a look at the rear view. Oh my God. Why call this a partial change? I mean, it really looks different. The more time I spend with Elantra PE, a partial change. So again, this cascading grill, it's still used and found on Elantra as well. Other sensors, brilliant way of hiding it and also one on the bumper as well we don't have the one on the sides though so let's go check out the rear Ooh. Let's just look at that and the largest difference is the diffuser is it functional i'm a little skeptical about that but probably is much better than having nothing on there that would also diffuse the air generated from the rear hence the name diffuser the tail light they stay the same Middle up, it's essentially the same thing. However, from the bottom, where the rear bumper happens, is actually where there's the most significant change. A little bit of close look and detail of Elantra. That is what the bottom looks like. So in order for the diffuser to be really practical, it actually has to be connected from here all the way to here and the undercover needs to be connected all throughout the underneath the car i mean it's for the looks probably for the most part but better than nothing unlike the front this rear is not open it's finished and it's actually blocked with a plastic piece as we can see the rear reflector is much longer on this one everything gets sucked into the middle elantra draws our attention to the middle from the start i think it's a much better balance and pick and choice with this PE model. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comment below. Over here at the C pillar, this is the finish that we see. I've seen some other photos and other trims of the cars and that might not be the final production model, but this whole black portion, the plastic part that we see, it actually was piano black on some other models. I'll go check it out with the other cars, but we will get a plastic finish with this. And of course, I can definitely feel the texture here. Don't worry too much. It's not going to bother you all that much with the car wash. No dirt is going to get stuck in here. So don't you worry about that. Maybe you could say it's all dull and boring using that bold plastic. It's not even piano black. However, Elantra wrapped it around with the chrome, the same chrome that we saw on the front bumper on the belt line as well. A lot of cars actually have the belt line quickly rising towards the end. Things that are steep towards the back, it kind of makes the overall car look more speedy sporty and all however that is not what elantra has instead it has the horizontal line the belt line that connects all the way like this chrome finish all throughout the belt line as seen on the front of the car that unified look i love that touch so i told you there would be another chrome used on the other parts of the car so it was the belt line and let's actually go to the back of the car and see if it's used elsewhere and yes of course um all right so this is not exactly the same chrome as used on the belt line or the front but it's a little more dull this definitely is not chrome but more like a plastic finish however i think elantra did a great job matching these two together giving that all unified look from the front the profile, the same thing. The trunk button is right here. Some other Hyundai cars, they get the trunk button hidden here, but the trunk button for Elantra is right here. And if you push it, that is how much it gets bumped. So it's actually exactly the same as the original CN7. Uh, is there a handle? No. So there is no handle for the trunk on this model as well yeah it's not a problem under sunny daylight and when your car is all 
clean and fresh, but usually I end up touching here to lower the trunk like so because there is just no other parts for you to hold on to. And I actually want to test out and see if it's the same thing as the predecessor when it comes to folding the second row seat. Yep, I can't do anything from the second row seat of the car, but instead you actually have to go to the trunk, open it up, and you see there's this pull. So pull, there's another one there, but I'm actually saving it intentionally. Now you can, okay. All right, so I might be a little confused here, but it could be Elantra N only. But Elantra N actually had the whole seat moving all together. So you could not actually fold seats separately for the second row. If you were to fold one, you actually had to fold the whole thing down. So you couldn't actually have anybody sitting while the seats are folded. It's not the case for a regular PE model. If you were to fold that, same thing. Just come around, use that lever. Use that lever right here, says pull. Pull it, simply just pull it in. And you probably saw it from the video, I just did it effortlessly, so you don't need to be an athlete to pull it down. And that is how much space we get. So no different, no big surprise here. It's essentially the same as the predecessor. Very firm and sturdy. Of course, you don't need to worry about that. And I love that white interior. One more time, pull this in. All right, now I hear the click. Somebody pulled it and it wasn't actually cl clicked all the way. Throw it back in like so and it clicks. You should actually hear this click like so. If you don't, that means your seat is not all the way in. The seats need to be intact like that. You're not gonna break anything, so don't worry about it. Just slam it in. It gets the heated seat on the second row seat as well. ACs in the second row seat. C-type charging ports, two of them, so you don't need to fight over one. It's been this case mostly in recent cars. There's a grill, mash grill on the passenger seat. There is none on the driver's seat. So this is what I mean. I mean, you just don't have anywhere to place your hand when closing the trunk. And this was actually something that I really hoped that Hyundai would include on the PE model, but unfortunately, it stays the same. And pro tip, <laughs> I actually pull this hinge, you see right here, to close it like so. So usually you would have to do it strong. And let me show you like so. This is how I actually was closing the trunk with the Elantra N. But mostly you will end up just touching somewhere here or somewhere there. You'll figure it out by looking at the fingerprints on the trunk. Before I hop in, this was actually covered on my CN7 review. Crazy design was made possible because this is actually made out of plastic on the top. The steel is actually inside underneath this plastic. I love this beautiful touch with the piano black plastic that stretches out to here, making the rear window look larger and longer by that much. Kind of fools our eyes by stretching it out that much, but it gives more that slanted kind of a GT look and coupe line kind of thing going that way, just like that. It's just absolutely beautiful. Profile was never seen before on any other car, that tabooed triangle design. And I think it's a little more evident on the white one, so I'll show you momentarily. But let's go inside this one because I actually love the interior color on here. The stitch finish and all other buttons self-explanatory. It's only powered window on the driver's seat. Lock, unlock uh, your mirrors and adjust the headlight level here using this controller. VDC off button, turn it off when you know what you're doing. And the same thing, this remains as a dummy. End line, it actually had the different drive modes on here. From now on, the end line is mostly focusing on just the cosmetic things, be it the exterior, be the interior. There is no performance difference of the engine and suspension anymore on and lines. This is just my guesstimation by Hyundai focuses more on the legit and brand and also the, keeping the end line on the cosmetic and the looks. Again, let's go inside. 
The big difference at a glance is definitely the steering wheel. The steering wheel also gets this brand new logo emblem that is just slick. And it looks great on the steering wheel. Let's close the door, kind of show you what it feels like. And you just heard the motor, so it has the welcome seat function to it as well. Automated seats, I can push it back like so butterfly wing kind of look to it definitely not as three spoke because we don't see anything in the middle why would you call this two spoke i know you guys are out there so those of you who stick your hand in in the middle like so and just maneuvering around uh you shouldn't really do it it's always three and nine o'clock for the safest um driving two hands on but we get beautiful hda and the latest technology for that right digital gauge cluster they remain the same so drive mode so that is what Eco, Sport, Smart, Normal. And I actually really liked that Sport when I first saw it. Carbon, and also it's got the red, you know, sporty. We will soon see a uh, GUI, the very latest model that's been implemented on other Hyundai Motor Group cars, i.e. Kona on Elantra for the later models for sure definitely the full change model but the interior the gauge cluster it stays the same for this levers here the turn signals and also the wipers and all no shift by wire on this elantra just yet and uniquely elantra is this handle in the middle and this kind of separates the cabin of the driver from the passenger just like so and that is a way of saying kind of a hey i am driver centric driver focused if you're in the passenger seat you kind of feel left out <laughs> because everything is very driver centric on this Elantra wireless charging pad as well as the good old things that we get the USB and also another C port and the heated ventilated seats and a lot a lot of physical buttons many people do like physical buttons up until this day that is including me I mean I really like the mix of this physical button and also the good use of digital display right there so 10.25 inch monitor right here and it really gets the job done as well i mean i have no complaint about this whatsoever but when i actually drove cars back to back i could definitely feel a huge difference between the 10.25 and 12.3 that's used on kona and probably all other future honda brand new cars to come but Elantra has been a great car all around. It says right here too, engraved switch. But you can just switch it around, pull it out, make the cup holder go deeper versus shallow like that. The glove box right here, nothing fancy, nothing rocket science. Let's see if it's got the upgrade here. So the sunshade, you pull it out, so it's the same thing. You cannot stretch it out. It is going to stay right over there. So these ones, these things that I am pointing out right now are some of the feedbacks that I got from the current CN7 owners, mostly Elantra N. But however, that remains the same for the PE model, not the wide panoramic sunroof. However, there is the sunroof. This is what it looks like from the outside so the sunroof actually gets tucked in it goes inside instead of going up this is manual you actually have to finish closing it using manually and when I tilt it up that is what it looks like that is how much tilt you get and you have to close it first in order to open it again nothing new nothing special just a drop down glove box and this horizontal vents kind of a tricky to get used to because a lot of people actually go for the smartphone holders and they attach it in the vents, right? Heads up, actually get one with the suction cup and attach it right here and have it standing somewhere here. It actually works beautifully. A pro tip again. And all these I know because I've test driven Elantra N for a long time and ah, oh boy, I enjoy that car. Let me actually go to the passenger seat and kind of give you a feel of what it feels like sitting on the passenger seat. 
This is the busy road of Seoul Gangnam. I know this is not the most busiest street in the world, but sure is in Korea. Let's go. On the passenger seat, the shotgun. My leg is already just touching this handle right here. I am already all isolated, even more crowded when I actually close the door. The passenger seat also comes with the power seats and oh, a little bit of a hidden spot for you to store your smartphone maybe. Feels like I have this space entirely to myself and this one is mine and mine only kind of feel to it. Uh, no aluminum brake pedals or any other pedals for that matter. A giant footrest. I actually do like that. Since I see that right there, let's actually go see and pop the hood. Check out what's underneath the hood. I don't think so, but... Yep, it doesn't have it. So just the good old, you have to use the skew right there. What's underneath the inside the engine bay, it stays the same, the same power terrain. This is the battery, so this is the power source still, don't get confused. A heavy hood, would have been better if aluminum, but you know, it just can't be aluminum everywhere. Yeah, it's got to be cost effective at the same time. Just look at this, it looks just so beautiful. Which color would you get? I'm definitely going with the white. Just check this out. And I want to show you the interior of this car because this is the Sage Green. And this is used from the eco-friendly, environmental-friendly material, the upcycled and recycled materials that Hyundai Motor Group uses a lot. And right here, Avante. I love that nice little touch and detail. You get the matching color for the center handle for the sage green interior. So I wanted to give you a look of the sage interior. Same thing for the second row seat. Kind of a dark green or graphite gray. Not sure if the camera is catching it doing the right work. Green and kind of a graphite grayish color all at the same time. Love, love what they have done. And don't forget about the wheel that's used the triangle over here as well. It's running on Kenergy GT, best mileage friendly tires. Looking for the size and it's 225, 45, 17. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and like Cars in Korea and I'll see you in the next video.